Okay, let's just jump straight in. The NEA1 is divided into three main sections. Research, which is worth six marks. Investigation, which is worth 15 marks. And analysis and evaluation, which is worth nine marks. <laughs> hey, but before we get into all that, we've got to get our heads around, boom, 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 the brief. So, in this video, we are going to cover exactly how to analyze an NEA1 brief. What is a brief? Well, let's not get all fancy pants about it. The brief is simply the task we're given set by the exam board. Now, when the exam board sets a task, they'll usually give you options. In most cases, three options. Today, we're going to explore one of those three options. To help understand the process of analysing a brief, I thought it's easy if we kind of divide it up into three little sections. The first part is quite simple. On the screen, you'll see an example of a brief. The three briefs, we're going to look at the top one to do with meringues. I want you to read through the brief carefully and then highlight what you think are the key words in the brief. So just pause the video and in the comments below, write out just the key words which you think are the key words in the brief. Then play the video and see if the words you highlighted are the same ones that I highlight when I do the same task. So have a go, pause the video, read through the brief, highlight any keywords, play the video, see if your keywords match my keywords. So how did it get on? Did your keywords match my keywords? If so, well done. Now I have some keywords which I've identified from the brief. The next thing I'm gonna do is take some of those keywords and use them as a basis for a spider diagram. Now the point of the spider diagram is to take some of the keywords and elaborate on them. Now the elaborating on the keywords allows me to then have a series of topics which I can then specifically research. Because the main focus of our NEA1 is meringues, I'm going to start out by putting meringues right in the centre of our spider diagram. That gives a context from which all the other points are going to come. After meringues, I want to ask myself, what exactly is a meringue? So the first thing I'm going to do when I'm doing my research is find a good definition for what a meringue, what a meringue actually is. I want to find out what they should look like, what they should smell like, what they should taste like. I'm going to investigate meringues or even the different ingredients that make up a meringue, I need to know what a good one should look like. Next, is there more than one way to make a meringue? That's a very important point. So we need to explore different recipes. When I'm exploring different recipes, I need to, to explore different ingredients in those recipes. How are meringues made? explore different methods. Some recipes may suggest hand whisk. Some recipes may suggest using an electric whisk. So I'm going to explore different methods. I'm also going to look at what ingredients are used and what are the functions of each of those ingredients. So when I'm looking at the different recipes, I want to look at why are recipes different in each recipe, there'll be a number of ingredients that are common to all, but, be but you may find there are a few ingredients a little bit different. I want to know what are the differences and what are the differences for. Each one of the ingredients, what function do they provide this particular dish? Next, I want to explain the chemical changes that take place in the eggs when they're being whisked. So you need to look into things like aeration. That's one of the things I'm going to discover. So when all the air is being whipped up into it, what chemical changes are taking place, are taking place in the egg that allow that process to happen? Finally, what does function of ingredients actually mean? I need to find myself a working definition. One of the main points they're asking for in this particular brief is to describe the function of ingredients. 
So we need to get a pretty good idea in my head what it, the phrase function of ingredients actually means. Now just to summarize, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take all these individual points and I'm gonna list them one after the other. And these will form the headings when I start my research. So, we've analyzed the brief and identified several key areas to look into. Perfect. Now we're just about ready to start on the research section, which is worth six marks. But just before you leave, I have a little bit of homework for you. On the screen, you will see the two NEA briefs that we have not looked into. Pick one of the briefs and do the following. First, use your phone or computer to take a screenshot of the two briefs. Next, on a piece of paper, have a go at analyzing your chosen brief using the methods discussed in this video. When you get to the spider diagram, take your time and make it look good. Use color to make different sections stand out. Once completed, you will have a good example you can use when you are given your NEA1 brief for real. Well, that's all for now. I'll see you in part two, how to conduct NEA1 research.